Hi guys and girls. So here I have an interesting little app. Let me show you its uh, front end. So uh, I'm logged in as Poltergeist. Poltergeist is the root user on this particular server. So I have access to creating new users. I've already created two users. They belong to the guest role. As you can see, I am a root user, so I obviously have extended rights in this particular app compared to John and Jane here, which are only guests. Now, of course, I can create as many users as I want to. Now, this little app is basically a to-do app. Now, I'm not going to proclaim that it's uh, equally complex as uh, professional apps uh, such as ClickUp and uh, similar types of apps. But it's definitely more rich and complex and better than the average to-do programming tutorial you can find out there. Now, I can go to status fields because I'm root and I can create new statuses, right? I can also create new to-dos and I can assign them to some user, which point I need to know the username. So let's create a new to-do for Jane. Uh, let's uh, call it... Uh, uh, Organize birthday party for John. John is having a birthday on Saturday. Let's create an amazing party for him such that he has a good time. Due date uh, next Saturday. Okay, that's going to be like uh, apparently the 1st of October, right? And let's save it. So now Jane, as you can see here, she's got two items. John has one item. Now, let me show you the point between the app, because if I now copy this URL and I log in with John in an incognito window, uh, I've just chosen a very bad password, so Google Chrome will probably uh, complain. Then I can see my to-dos, right? I can look at this to do and I can edit it. When I'm editing it, the only thing I can actually do is changing its status, right? So now you can see uh, the uh, to do is in progress. Then when I'm done, I can change it to done, right? And I can also look at status fields, but I cannot edit them and I cannot create new status fields. There's no plus button here and there's no edit button here. And I can also look at everybody else's to-dos, right? But I cannot create new to-dos or edit them. The only thing I can do is go into my to-dos, I can click a to-do and I can change its status. Now, if I look, uh, as you can see here, my to-dos now, okay, fix the roof. Let's uh, check out uh, Jane's to-dos. So if I now log in with Jane, now all of a sudden in my to-dos here, you can see I have different to-dos, right? I have go shopping and I have organized birthday party for John. So let's look at why. And I can also edit them the same as Jane could, but I can only change the status. I can't edit the text of it or delete. Well, actually I can delete it, but that's a bug. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have been uh, able to do uh, that. So, uh, but if I go into status, I cannot edit or create new statuses and I cannot create or edit new globally, global to-dos. So let's look at how this thing actually was created by closing this window and closing this window and then opening up the backend cloud lights, right? Because the backend API is the specification for the front end, as you remember probably from my previous video. So let's first look at the database. You see the database only has two. Uh, let's find it. It only has two tables. But my to-do app had three different components. Why is that? Well, actually, because when I generated a CRUD API wrapping my to-do database, then I actually CRUDified this thing twice. Not once, but twice. And I can do that by uh, writing my underscore to-dos and then Crudifying it and then choosing blah 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 a different name and click crudify again to which point I'm basically ending up with two different crud HTTP endpoints two different sets of endpoints with different business logic and that is uh, the whole idea between the thing because when I crudified my underscore to-dos which is the to-dos that only shows me my items 
Uh, first of all, I checked off long data because I want it to be a select drop down list for, for status and, and not like a lookup field because there aren't really that many status uh, items in the database. Then uh, I went in on due date, I removed create and update. Then I went into username and I verified it said lock to username. When I lock, when I credified the global to do, I turned off locking, right? And then I had uh, the default name being to do. And then the only thing I allowed uh, the user to actually change, I removed create, I removed updates, such that only read this here. I removed uh, title, create, and updates. And as you can now see, when I'm generating my to-dos here now, I cannot create or update the title. I cannot uh, create or uh, update the created field. I cannot uh, create or update the description field. And since this is locked to username, both create and update will automatically take care of that. And most importantly, um, I change this to guests, and this to guest, and this to guest, and this to guest, such that both root users, admin users, and guest users have access to create, read, update, and the, well, actually, I, I think I removed it from, and I can't remember, really. It doesn't matter. The point is, here I have a create endpoint. Here I can associate a bunch of rows with the invocation of this endpoint. If I don't have guest here, that means that users be not belonging to root or admin, only the guest row can actually invoke the endpoint, right? Now, by combining these together in kind of like, to some extent, a uh, smart uh, way, the way I did here, I ensured that only root users can actually create items and assign them to users, while other users, such as John here cannot create uh, items for others, right? He doesn't have the create button here. He doesn't have the edit button here because he's not allowed to invoke this API, right? Because he is a guest user and not a root user. And the only thing he was allowed to change here was the status field. While the Potter guy user, which is the admin, of the thing is allowed to, to do everything. This is referred to as business logic in an app, right? Where the ability to create or update or delete records might be associated only with users belonging to one particular role, while other users only have access to reading the items, etc., etc. And by crudifying the same table twice, I end up with not two components, right? Remember here, if you go in here and you have a look at the database, then there are only two tables here, but we end up with one, two, and three components in the front end because I crudified the to-do table twice with different URLs. When you do this, it's very important that you change the URL. You first of all choose that the table and the first time, uh, you can just choose the default secondary URL. The second time, you have to change it to something else, at which point you end up with two sets of uh, APIs, which again translates into two sets of components in the front end. And of course, each of these components can have different business logic according to what settings you apply here in uh, the CRUD API backend parts of your application. Now at this point, I want to uh, show you a little bit of a trick because now after you have CRUDified your, you have created your API, you can actually go in here and you can have a look at the code that magic generated for you. And one really cool thing is that you can expand uh, after you have uh, generated your front end, right, you end up here. You can go into Hyper ID and you can expand, etc. You can expand front end, you can expand source. You can click these three uh, buttons here. You can choose active folder and you can download the folder. And at this point, 
you can actually, if you have installed Node.js and VS Code on your computer, you can open this folder and you can edit it as you see fit. And in fact, let me do just that, uh, just for uh, to show you how it actually looks like. Here you can see the Angular source code that Magic automatically created for you. Here we can see we have two to-do components. We have my to-dos and we have to-do, right? If I go in here, I can actually edit the HTML code. When I'm done editing my HTML code, I can close this guy and just kill this guy. I can zip the code, compress source, and I can go here. And I can delete the existing one active folder, uh, delete, and then I can upload into the front end folder, active folder, upload file. Let me go to download here. Then I can hopefully this is going to work. <laughs> Let me unzip it and see if it works. And it actually doesn't work because, um, you know what? Uh, let me delete this guy active folder, uh, delete, and then let me go back here and change it to front and dot zip. And then hopefully I'll be able to upload it, upload the file, front end. Then let me see how it ends up looking now when I unzip it. Front end source, yes, this is correct. And now as I have edited and modified my Angular code, I can go back to Hub, right? And I can click Delete on this thing, and I can recreate my front-end cloud lot. Create cloud lot, then I can recreate it. Now, when you upload uh, to do's, when you upload your folder, it's important that you delete the node underscore modules folder that the Angular and, and uh, TypeScript compiler automatically creates for you as you're doing npm i and ng so. So anyways, I will go deeper into that into a later video. But uh, for now, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, have a nice day. And please remember to subscribe and uh, like and hit the bell and share the video with your friends. Thank you. Have a nice day.